Well, hello, everybody. Welcome here, or welcome back, whatever the case may be. I am here with my coffee. I thought perhaps I would like to talk about, well, let me preface by saying I have been watching on YouTube, seeing some different things where people are reacting to anti LGBTQ2 plus content comments. It just, it kind of makes me sad to think of how far away from equality and peace of mind. I mean, we've come a long way from when I was in my youth, putting it mildly. Now, I know there's plenty of people far older than I am. I'm certainly not that kind of delusional. And plenty of people younger than me. More than enough people younger than me. But I am definitely past middle age. And back in the 80s, well, I, maybe I'm going to start now. In the 70s, when I was just going into puberty, I hit puberty at about the age of nine. That's when the first sign became apparent in a way that I was not prepared for. My parents never talked about sex or anything that would be an embarrassing or difficult topic for them, unless it was forced upon them for some reason. Now, the reason I preface this is during certain formulative parts of my life, what would have been seen as very innocent experiences in other circumstances hit differently and allowed certain aspects of my personality interests. I'm really not sure, but it certainly did imprint on my being in a permanent way because I've always known I was gay from as far back as I've been able to understand what that was. Now, we weren't educated. We understood procreation from a biological, clinical, educational aspect based on the little minimal bits of knowledge we were given in school that was very practical. But there was no discussion of sexuality, no discussion really of being straight. It was just, this is what there was. This is what sex was. This is what sex is for. And I didn't think anything differently. I mean, that's just what we were taught. You just kind of accept what you're taught, however minimal and basic that knowledge may be. And getting back to the story in the 70s, my father, who, in an attempt to teach me to set my sights higher and make sure I got an education and not end up having to work in something like a coal mine, because we're from the Maritimes, took me to the coal mine, took me down in the coal mine. So I got to see what that experience was like. I don't remember a lot of what it was like work-wise in the coal mine. My early onset of puberty <laughs> made it so I only remembered before we left, we had to shower. So we're in there showering and it's just very open. And here I am looking at all these dirty men getting clean in the shower. And to this day, I find the thought of men covered in grease and dirt and smut and, and filth getting clean in water to be very, very provocative imagery for me. And I'm sure that was nothing my father would have ever imagined would have come out of that, what he was, what he was trying to teach me from that experience. But that was the reality. Now, my being there in those circumstances did not make me gay. And if I wasn't gay already, I don't think I would have noticed things quite the same way. So all of those things just tell me that I naturally already gay before I hit puberty. And puberty developed accordingly because of that. Now, moving from the 70s, that was just a 
explain a bit of what my interpretation of self-discovery of, of gayness and whatnot was for me. So that's established. I knew I was gay. Then when I was in high school, there wasn't a lot of option trying to meet people, trying to find out who was like thinking. My friends accepted me for me. Most of them suspected I was gay. It was just never discussed. And I remember going with some friends that ultimately I found out were gay as well, or at least questioning. They, at the time, certainly felt that they were. None of us really thought much about what that meant. We just decided that, you know, like we'd go to these dances. And the dances were not like now where you could just go down to like a gay bar or anything, especially when you're in high school. But they would have dances that were created sort of outside the city limits of places where it would be not really promoted. It would just kind of like word of mouth would get around. But word of mouth sometimes gets to the wrong people. And many times I remember coming out of these dances and seeing a line of pickup trucks pretty much, but all these roughnecky people outside their vehicles with baseball bats ready to do people in. And there was a lot of violence. And it was not a good time. I really don't want to go back to those days. And things seem to get quite a bit better. And they still are. Compared to that, things still are better. But I see a tremendous amount of backsliding towards those days with the violence and the acceptability of that violence against certain people. Now, I don't even, I don't even want to club a hater to death. I don't know why they want to beat up people that have nothing to do with them unless they've chosen to have it have something to do with them or they believe it already does. What is it, Scooby? Is there somebody in the hallway? I think they're vacuuming. You seem very alert. But all of these funny channels, like it, they're, they're put out by people who are gay or at least very, very accepting allies. And I can only watch this kind of hate content through the eyes of these funny people. But even then, I find that like it's not triggering in a, it makes me angry way. It's triggering in a, it makes me really sad. And it reminds me of a time that a lot of young people now wouldn't even be able to imagine because they've grown up with an acceptance in society that we could only dream of when I was younger and celebrate now that I am older. I celebrate that for all people. And I don't even have a problem with people who are anti-LGBTQ2+, having conversations, expressing their concerns, their fears, but most of the fears that they hang their hat on in their arguments don't even exist. Like they're not real, they're straw man arguments, a lot of fallacy. And you can't have effective communication when one side believes fake information. They're either, I don't quite know how to put this because I don't want to be purposefully insulting, but undereducated. I don't want to think that they're stupid, but maybe perhaps they have not had the right information for them to learn something new and grow and evolve, or they could be purposefully, willfully ignorant where they don't want to know the information that is going to make them have to change their mind if they are reasonable, rational, logical people. I don't know where people fall on those scales. All I know is I really wish we could actually have proper communication so that people would understand. Here's an interesting thing that I, I find odd that doesn't help drive the point home to some of these conservative-minded people. I don't know. I'm sure it doesn't apply 100% that way, but that's how I see them. For right or wrong, that is my being honest, that they feel that 
other people getting rights. Now, I saw it happen when women's rights happened. Men felt, oh, we're losing our rights. And gay people got rights. Straight people were like, we're losing our rights. Trans people are getting rights. Cis people are like, oh, we're losing our rights. And it's like, nobody's losing anything. Nobody's come and taken anything away from the other people. They're just giving people that didn't have them a chance to sort of catch up. And they're not even there yet. Like equality has not even been achieved yet, folks. Not even for women. When they make the same money for the same job and all this stuff, you know, maybe then we'll talk. You know, when they get pockets in their clothes, maybe then we'll talk. Equality has not been achieved. Equality for races has not been achieved. Equality for disabilities have not been achieved. Like there's, there's so many things like equality. We've made great strides, but we're not there yet. And there's this pushback from people that go, you're taking stuff away from us. And I'm thinking, this is what it feels like to be forced into a closet for just being who you are. And they don't think that's okay, but they want to make it happen back the other way. I don't get that. That makes zero sense. Like, how can you possibly turn your brain off enough for that to make sense? But regardless, that is where people's heads are at. And I kind of wish secretly that the people that feel that way, the bigots and the phobes, all get driven into a closet for 50 years to see what it's like and see then. Because if that's the case and then they come back and they're reasonable people and they get it, I'll let them have their parade. They have earned their pride. So, <laughs> on that note, I'm sure I have plenty of other things on the subject to discuss, but this is what it was for me today based on what I was watching online. So yeah, until the next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.